The threat from violent extremism online is growing. Homeland Security is warning that online extremist forums are encouraging copycat attacks, but it's also changing. We're going to see an acceleration of a fusion and a merger of different kinds of ideologies. The internet is spawning dangerous new subcultures in ever more fluid ways. More and more male hatred against women is rising up through the hidden crevices of online forums and entering real life with fatal consequences. At least 10 people have been killed. This is a pattern of behavior that should be intercepted. Authorities are struggling to keep up with this new face of violent extremism. Governments are not nimble enough to evolve at the speed at which the online ecosystems are evolving. Can tech innovation help to prevent the next mass shooting? Why do you think sexual assaults and all these things keep rising? Women don't need men no more. This man, Jake Davison, went on a violent rampage in 2021 in his home city of Plymouth in Britain. Police received several calls at 6.11, reporting a man firing a gun close to Biddick Drive. Davison murdered his mother before fatally shooting four others and then himself. The 22-year-old had links to an online community known as incels. Incels are mostly young men who define themselves as involuntarily celibate and often blame women for their own inability to form sexual relationships. You, know, you talk about intelligent smartness, you know, women don't give a f about none of that unless it, you got that. Incels often share deeply misogynistic content promoting violence against women on platforms and forums, such as Reddit, Discord, Twitch, and others. Davison was active on multiple subreddit forums. It's likely that this is an individual who was radicalized online. Would this have happened without the internet? That's hard to say. But if we think of two key indicators for involvement in the incel community, which is isolation and high dosages of online content, I have a huge concern that we will see increased uh, membership in this community and increased potential for violence as a result of that. In 2021, researchers began analysing almost 1.2 million posts linked to incel content and sites. Over an 18-month period, they found a 59% increase in terms and code words relating to mass murders. Since 2014, at least nine perpetrators of fatal attacks, mostly in America, are known to have consumed incel-related content. And in Britain, Dr. Caitlin Reger now advises the police on this threat. From a law enforcement point of view, we need to stop the lone wolf narrative. We need to acknowledge that this is a pattern of behavior that should be monitored and intercepted. Incel ideology is part of a wider problem in the digital sphere. It's well established that the internet is the primary incubator for dangerous and often bizarre new ideas and groups. But these keep growing and evolving online in ever more fluid ways. Coleman said he believed his children were going to grow into monsters and that he had to kill them after he was enlightened by QAnon and Illuminati conspiracy theories. He says he was also having visions and signs that his wife had serpent DNA and passed that DNA on to his children. What I'm looking at here is the um, a threat bulletin that we share with law enforcement partners, local prevention activists and others. Ross Frenet is the CEO of Moonshot, a company which monitors violent extremism of all kinds online. Al-Qaeda had a really clear worldview and set of ideas. Um, many neo-Nazi movements have texts that they've been calling back to for, for generations. These kinds of emerging social movements, ideologies, don't have that. 
Moonshot has tracked how the internet has lowered the barriers to creating new violent subcultures and groups. Violent extremism in a pre-internet age needed a certain critical mass. Um, that bar has been significantly lowered. So you don't need that many individuals to feel like you're part of a movement. For too long, online chatter has been dismissed somewhat by folks um, who just see it as something that takes place on the internet and doesn't affect the real world. And we've now seen, without any doubt, that that just is not the case. It's not just the creation online of niche communities, such as incels, which is a concern. The bigger problem is how the internet enables these communities to morph and intertwine with larger extremist movements, in particular alt-right and far-right groups. Looking at the incels relationship with the far-right, we know there is some overlap in the ideologies. Both talk about a sort of mythical golden age long gone in the past where things were different to what they are today. All these kind of narrative structures appear in both. I think that over the next 10 years, what we're going to see is an acceleration of the fusion and a merger of different kinds of ideologies and different kinds of movements. The British government's counter-radicalization program, PREVENT, categorizes these kinds of ideologies as mixed, unstable or unclear. Between 2016 and 2021, referrals to PREVENT categorized in this way increased significantly. By March 2021, this category accounted for over half of all annual referrals. A sharp increase from 2016, when the vast majority of referrals were linked to radical Islam. The reason we're seeing more of this ideological overlap or cross-pollination, if you will, largely stems from the shifting ways in which we're using the internet. So if you look at young people nowadays, um, quite often these ideas permeate into other communities. So for example, a lot of extremist ideas are being shared on gaming platforms, or quite often here now gamers referring to other people as being a chat, which is a term that originated within incel spaces. This is a really powerful tool. And what's key here really is the threat posed by harmful conspiracy theories. Analysts monitoring new forms of violent extremism online point to another key factor the capacity to share false and conspiratorial information instantly and endlessly. Across the whole of the US, after the Buffalo terror attack, uh, in which a white supremacist killed 10 people at a supermarket in Buffalo, New York, we saw over a thousand percent increase in searches for the Great Replacement Conspiracy Theory, a conspiracy theory that was referenced quite closely by the attacker in his manifesto. The proliferation of extremism is also being encouraged by the normalization of hateful content on mainstream platforms. Every day in 2020, humans collectively spent a million years on social media, where it's not unusual for videos like this to be widely shared. Fat, ugly, sack of shit. Have you ever seen a woman try and do anything competently? Andrew Tate is a former reality TV star, infamous for his misogynistic views. As of September 2022, hashtag Andrew Tate content on TikTok has been viewed more than 17 billion times. And he amassed millions of followers before being suspended in August 2022 by almost all platforms. This content is not necessarily that niche anymore, but rather it is being saturated into youth culture more generally. It might be a funny meme someone puts up on their Facebook feed that you maybe knew in high school. It's through the higher dosages that people become indoctrinated. The content really starts to permeate off screens and onto streets. For those in the business of tackling the threat from violent extremism online, keeping ahead of the enemy is a challenge. One hope for turning the tide is designing technology to intercept individuals at scale before they succumb to online radicalization. In 2016, Moonshot designed something called the redirect method with Jigsaw, a part of Google. Google searches for some violent content are met with links to curated material, including links to psychological help and support. We 
bought up the advertising space and tried to entice and encourage those who are trying to access extremist material to instead consume material that undermines those extremist movements. At its core, harnessing ad tech to counter terrorism is what the redirect method is all about. There are some encouraging signs. Moonshot has found that Americans consuming extremist or violent content online are at least 47% more likely than average to take up offers of mental health services online. But measures like this are a long way from reaching the required scale. For now, the fight against violent extremism in the digital world is buffering. Extremists have always been about three steps ahead of those trying to stop them. That shift needs to take place where we take this seriously as a national security threat, because if it doesn't, then this problem is going to be one we're dealing with for a very, very long time. Hello, I'm Tom Standage, Deputy Editor at The Economist. If you'd like to learn more about this topic, click on the link opposite. And if you'd like to watch more of our Now and Next series, click on the other link. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.